Please welcome Max Long and Safraz Ali. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of Engage in London. I'm Safraz Ali, Vice President and General Manager of Smartsheet in EMEA. Yesterday was amazing. I was reminded at every turn of the magic that happens when the power of the Smartsheet platform is placed in the hands of change agents like you. I love feeling the energy you brought to this conference, hearing conversations between teams, and seeing the light bulbs go on as you learned and shared with each other. I invited Max to join me this morning to share his thoughts coming out of day one. Max recently joined Smartsheet as president of go-to-market to support our growing global customer base. And like most of you, this is his first engage. Max, welcome to day one. Thank you. How was your first engage going? Well, it's been absolutely fantastic. It really has. First time for me. Actually, a little story actually maybe set this up. Last night, I was out with the teams, and one of the Smartsheet folks came up to me, and she said, Hey, uh, I have to say, you're a lot taller than I expected you to be. So I apologize. I said, I, I do apologize that I've upset you in some way. Uh, and that didn't put her off. She carried on and then said, so you're from California. You seem to have a bit of a California glow about you, but that accent doesn't seem to be very Californian to me. And uh, that's very true. I actually grew up in southwest London, in Kingston, if some of you know that. And uh, it's really exciting for me to be at my first engage after two months in London, in Europe, with all of you, so it's been fantastic. And the energy from day one and uh, what we did with the partners the day before, with 80 of our partners in a room, it's just been unbelievable. And I went down onto the show floor, went to the booths last night, and it just, the customers, the partners, the smart sheet folks, it's been an incredible journey for the last couple of days. That's amazing. It's great uh, the extent to which you've been able to connect with customers and partners. What are you hearing from them? So I'll start with my favorite story, which was I was talking about being on the show floor last night. And uh, one of the customers, and I won't say who she was, uh, she was a real fan of Smartsheet. And she said, I've discovered it uh, a couple of years ago. I've been using it, and then I've been evangelizing it across the organization. And she said, I'm going to get promoted to be director of the, the team PMO as a result of me knowing Smartsheet. And I thought, wow, that's unbelievable. That's the sort of story I love to hear. And then a couple of other stories. I had the pleasure of listening to Caitlin from uh, Bayer. And uh, Caitlin had flown in from the US, and I think she's probably up the front here. There you are. Uh, and she'd had two hours sleep, and I was thinking, gosh, it's going to be really tough to get up and be energetic in front of the team after just two hours. She got up there and she went, bang, 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 bang. And I could just see the enthusiasm, the passion coming through, and she kept the energy going all day. Uh, it was great. And then Andreas, her colleague, talked about how we're driving change management through the whole of Bayer. And then we had John talking from Sodexo. And he was talking about how they're getting the, the global PMO and really going out to all the different teams and the energy it's driving through their use of Smartsheet. And then talk about results. I had lunch with Matt from McLaren. And uh, in, in Formula One, it's all about results. And he was saying, hey, the use of Smartsheet to help us get ready for the new car update from Miami was integral to us winning and getting Lando onto the podium. And so the customer stories, the partner stories have just been unbelievable. Yeah, they, they, they've been amazing. One of the things we hear a lot from our customers is the complexity they see in their business. And you've yourself talked about simplifying. Mm. Could you talk about that? Yeah, look, um, uh, for our existing customers, I think there's several things we're looking at to really uh, light up the experience. One is self-discovery of all the new capabilities. Because a lot of you come to these conferences, you see all the new rich functionality and capabilities we're building. We're making sure we put that into our products and make it available for you to go and try it out yourselves. Because otherwise, you think, Oh, I love that, but how do I get to it? Then you get engrossed in your work again, you miss it. Second thing is, we're working with our partners, with our own professional services organization, with our support teams, to make sure that we provide our existing customers with the best engagement possible. Really help you get the most value from our solutions. And I think that's really important. And the last thing I'll say for, for our new customers and new contacts with existing customers who don't really know Smartsheet, you heard Mark talk about the use cases yesterday to say, hey, look, yeah, we can solve thousands of problems, thousands of problems, and we do every single day. But to help you understand what we can bring to your business, here's six examples with the benefits and the value that's realized as a result. So we are trying every single day to make it as simple as possible for you to be successful and drive value with our products. Yeah, that's fantastic. Max, appreciate hearing from you. I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back to the conference, connecting more with customers. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.
I know a lot of you help others see the value of Smartsheet, in addition to using it for your own work. You're change makers in more than one aspect of your work. Today's keynote speaker, Professor Eddie Obeng, knows something about making and managing change and how we can work smarter together. Eddie is a thought leader of our time. His wildly popular TED Talk has seen over 1.7 million views. In response to our fast-changing world, Eddie took a leap of faith and founded Pentacle Business School, a virtual business school designed to help people see a simple way out of a complex world. He's also a professor of entrepreneurship at the Henley Business School. A pioneer in the field of project management, Eddie's experiences working as a project manager and line manager have given him valuable insight into what it takes to get work done. Today, Eddie will speak to the rapid pace of change and how we can work smarter together. Eddie's approach is collaborative, and so get ready to participate. Please join me in welcoming Professor Eddie Obeng. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And I hear yesterday went well. Am I right? Are you okay to be interactive? Yes? You sure? Okay, great. So, um, so what I was hoping to do was, um, was to really take you on a journey about change and innovation and how to get your ideas across the organization and what might get in the way. And I was looking at the whole t use of things like smart sheets and how you're using that in your organizations. And I was busy thinking, I was so excited about doing this presentation. I mean, really excited. And then I made the mistake, huge mistake. I went and listened to the media. And they told me, and you probably don't know this, but apparently we're all going to be replaced by AI. <laughs> I went, wow, we're trying to change how we work to become more efficient in the world. Waste of time. Wait, um, waste of time. So I went, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I've got 40 minutes. These guys want to hear about innovation and how they bring, is that right? Uh, innovation. You, you want to hear about change. You want to hear about making sure you're productive. Am I in the right place or? And I thought it's all pointless because they're going to replace us all with AI. So I've been, last couple of hours, I've been running around thinking to myself, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And you see, the challenge we have is that they actually have a bit of a point. Um, because the thing is, human beings are very weird. I, I don't know whether you've noticed, but, but it's hard to get them to do stuff. Uh, is it just me? Okay. So... So just think about it. So I've done a little sort of scribble over here for you, which uh, I thought you might enjoy. But what I've got along the top is I've got evolution. Can you see the evolution? The man rising from once having been on their knees, etc. Below that, I've got the technology and the whole movement of technology. So I started with things like tools. So over here, we've got like tools like spades and things. Remember tools? Yeah, okay. Then we went from tools, we went across to like using things like water wheels, where we got energy from other stuff to make things happen. Then we went transistor. Do you remember those days? Transistor. And then now we have all these devices and the big dogs and all the rest of it. And so I thought, maybe, maybe, maybe there is evolution. Maybe it is going to overtake us. Maybe the media are right. Because when you think about it, if you say take the technology side, storing information, easy. The architecture, easy, just get some silicon, done. Am I right? If you take data transfer, I've never seen two computers arguing with each other that they're wrong. You hear me? <laughs> done. If you take networking, you just plug them in. They never complain. Am I right? So done. So upgrading, upgrading is just a doddle. You just pull one bit out, stick another bit in, or put some code in. Done. Okay? And look at this one, self-determining. They've got this thing called AI. Have you heard of it? Yes, AI can work stuff out. Amazing. So we're doomed. Because on the human side, when it comes to how we store information, yeah, you might have 10 petabyte, petabytes in your head, but you go to a meeting and try and share it. <laughs> it's not possible, is it? Okay? You might, for example, know how to get stuff done. Yes, you do. But think about the processes we use. We want to get some work done. So what do we do? We do things like, I must tell everyone. So I email you, you reply to him, he blinds, he sees her, he bumps into her. We send all these emails around, and after about 20 of them, we say to each other, we must have a meeting to discuss this, okay? <laughs> but of course, we're working from home, and we're doing different things in different parts of the organization. So we have to go on a conference call of some sort, Teams, Zoom. So 
When they promised us teams, do you remember? They had these adverts with all these good-looking, beautiful people, well-lit. Yeah? <laughs> Lovely-looking people. You'd love to talk to them all day. Then you get on the call, and it's people like me with bad lighting, and we're hiding <laughs> in grim stuff. So no one's listening anyway. The people look awful. <laughs> Is it just me? Okay. And so, and so that's one of our processes. The other processes we use are things like we have these things called hierarchies. Have you come across it? Where basically you're not allowed to do anything down here unless that lot have understood and let you do it and give you money. So here's a headache at work. Unlike computers who move information at the speed of light, we use this thing called conversation talking, which is like, is it 10 kilobytes or is it 100 kilobytes per second when you're talking? I can't remember. But it's really slow. So we talk to each other. Then we have to get all the way to the exec. And the exec are busy people. So all this information comes in. But they can't listen fast enough because they have to do PowerPoints and talk at them. <laughs> and they only meet once every month. So there's this bottleneck because the computers are moving the data and the human beings are making. And I have a second point to make, etc. You see what this is the problem? So our processes, the way we organize ourselves, the way we're distributed, even just getting together to share information, you know, big cross there, okay? So then we're into networking, okay? So we say, you must network, and people come in and go, we've not been introduced, who are you, etc. And anyway, we don't like that department, we never talk to them, and move on. So, and then we've got upgrading. You had to be given free food to come here to learn. <laughs> but, we <laughs> but we are self-determining. We are definitely self-determining and we're autonomous. So does that mean that we're doomed? The technology is going to beat us, or worse, they're going to put it inside us and make us in some sort of transhumans? I'm not sure. I think the world, on average, behaves like that. But I know you guys are one step ahead because you've got the effort, energy, and passion to start to connect your work and connect your people. That's why you're here. Most of the world doesn't do that sort of thing. I, I teach business. I teach in a virtual campus. So I live on technology to connect people and empower them. So we're in the same sort of business, okay? When it comes to thinking, we can be creative. You've got all sorts of ideas. When it comes to AI, everyone gets stuck with this, but AI is a complete oxymoron, and I'll explain why. Once upon a time, I used to be an engineer. That means I did things like programming when I was young. So when they talk about AI, I just hear machine learning, because we used to program those things ages ago. What happened was, all of a sudden, the computer chips, which they use for doing the calculation, you know how AI works? No one ever does. So I'll tell you, quickly. Okay? <laughs> Artificial does not mean it's not human. Yeah? That's not what it's about. It's about the way in which it's designed. If you take a human being and you look in their brain, they have these things called neurons. Have you come across them? They're sort of like that-ish, with a long leg and something like that. And this bit of the thing here listens out to say, what's happening in your leg? Okay? Then all these signals come in. The nucleus goes, you better move around. And so you move your little toe. The message goes down. Move toe. Done. OK? So that's how your brain sort of does stuff. So what somebody had was an idea. What if we had lots of signals coming in, and we put lots of computer little boxes here to listen to those signals, and they all talk to each other, and we got to a decision point, just like the nucleus does, and we said, go and do X. And that's, when you, that's all that AI is. It's four by four matrices doing calculations. There's no intelligence there. And we know there's no intelligence there because of this image I'm about to try and show you, which is this one. It doesn't even know what a hand is. <laughs> How smart is that? You with me? So we are going to figure out how to turn all these things back into tools. But more importantly, we're going to take the tools we've got and we're going to supercharge them. You're going to find ways of getting everyone across the organization to engage, to want to work that way. And you're going to find ways of making smart sheet better so it fits the human beings and not only makes them productive, not only makes them able to work together and collaborate, but also makes them joyful. Because after all, we're not just, well, you might, you might be. I'm not just here to work. I want to have some time enjoying myself as I live on this planet. So how we bring that joy and laughter into it is going to be quite important. So that's what I'm planning to do. I'm going to talk about how to make that happen. That's my plan, to make you sort of save the humans and uh, overcome AI and become super amazing. Because that's my plan. But I want to know what you want.
Um, so I'm going to give you a minute in groups of three. Just have a quick discussion. You know, imagine that the session is fantastic. The next 31 minutes is brilliant. You learn everything you need to know about how to convince senior people. I don't know. You learn how to uh, uh, engage and con connect, how to come up with new ideas. I don't know what it is. What is it which if you learned in the next 30 minutes will make it the best 30 minutes of the whole conference? No, the best 30 minutes of any conference you've been to. No, what you learn is so fabulous, it makes the best 30 minutes of your whole life. Okay, that's very unlikely, but it's possible. There's some really weird people out there. <laughs> that's question one. Question two, I want you to imagine it's a disaster. It's bad. What's your greatest fear? What don't you want me to waste time on? I'm going to give you just a minute to discuss. In fact, 30 seconds, because the world's moving fast. Okay? I'll collect the first three hopes, the first three fears, and we'll build our session together collaboratively around that. Does that feel like a good plan? Okay, over to you. About five seconds left. Time. Okay. Good stuff. Let's go. So, what should we start with? The hopes or the fears? One lone voice says, hopes. <laughs> We're going to have to start with the fears. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so what don't you want me to waste time on? You're just going to have to shout it out. Whoever goes first wins. You don't want to talk about change management. You want it. <laughs> I'm not clear with my instructions. Okay, so change management. Okay, great. Okay, but I put it on the wrong side. This is the hope side. Fears, any fears, any fears. Anything we shouldn't waste our time on. Sorry? It goes straight out of the, your, look, out the front door. Out, so, it, yeah, gone. Okay, front door. Okay. Okay, any other fears? Anything else we shouldn't do? Failure. You don't want me to teach you things which will then make you fail. Yes? So, try to get it right. Okay, I'll try to write. Okay. No failure. Okay, any other things you don't want me to waste time on? Financial measurements. I mean, there are many things. Boredom. I mean, there are hundreds of, what's the third one? Go for it. Training. Training. Okay, so you are, what you need to do is you need to spend time on training. Okay, great. Anything else for their hopes? We've got, you want to talk about change management, anything else? Learning. How to get other people to learn or to learn yourself? Both? One? The other? God, you guys are so shy. <laughs> inspiration. Okay, inspiration. Okay. Got it. So I've got three things. Change management, learning, and how to inspire people. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Hmm. Where shall we start? Hmm. Okay, I know where we'll start. Let's start by thinking about how human beings respond to change. Is that a good place to start? Okay. So I just asked you your hopes and fears, didn't I? Okay. Why did I ask you your hopes and fears? What was I up to? What was I up to? 
Why am I asking you hopes? I'm a professor. I've done this stuff before. I should just be able to tell you. Why am I asking you hopes and fears? What am I up to, really? Engagement. Everyone's engagement. How does that engage you? I've just put you under great stress. That's not engaging people. <laughs> what's going What's really going on? I'm allowing you to discover, but I'm the professor. I should just tell you. <laughs> He's laughing at me. He doesn't think I'm a proper professor. Okay. So, you see, what you don't realize is that human beings are designed in a very specific way. Okay? And that way is part of why we don't move forward. So, I don't know if you remember, but millions of years ago, there were hunter-gatherers. Those were the two jobs. There was no, like, head of PMO or smart sheet lead. Okay? <laughs> Just two jobs, hunters and gatherers. So, when you woke up in the morning, and your other said, wait, your other half said, where are you going? So, I'm going out hunting and gathering. So, you set off. Would they just let you go hunting and gathering? No. They'd give you a massive hug. Why? Why did they hug you? You might die because other animals have the same strategy of hunting and gathering. Okay? The fastest a person has ever run on the planet was Usain Bolt, 26 miles an hour, okay? Do you know the, how fast an average rabbit can run? 32 miles an hour. You with me? Usain Bolt can't catch a rabbit, and I bet your dog can go faster than a rabbit. You with me? You're going to get eaten. So how can we hear top animal on the planet eating everything else? How did it happen? When you watch Discovery Channel, they'll say, early man, <laughs> early mankind used to live in tribes together, and they used their big brains to think of opportunities, and they would communicate with their ook, ook, funny voices, and uh, they could make tools with their opposable thumbs. You remember that stuff? Okay, I have to tell you all that's nonsense. Imagine we're out hunting and gathering together. Hunt and gather, hunt, okay. You want more of an aggressive hunt and gather, don't you? Okay, we are the smart feed team, hunting and gathering. Come on, let's chant together. Hunt, gather, hunt, get some passion up. Yes, okay, so we're out hunting and charging, and out of the bushes comes a, a saber-toothed tiger bounding towards us. What do you do? Stick your thumb out and go, stop. That doesn't work. <laughs> what do you do? You run, exactly. And this, guys, is the whole challenge which we have. It's very simple. When something bad happens, you run. Quite simply, back in your brain here, there's a piece of software. It's called the amygdala. It has certain short, shortcut processes. When it sees a change, any change, it confuses it for danger. It literally turns the blood flow off to the front part of your brain. Blood goes off. Frontal cortex goes off. Suddenly, you can't think. Then it starts to fill you with adrenaline. But before that, you feel fear. Why is fear necessary? Because fear puts you in the moment. No one ever said, I was going to meet my saber tooth tiger, but I've got a meeting at four. No one does that. Okay? <laughs> so immediately that's happened, you then run full of adrenaline. So when you're trying to drive your change programs, every time you tell somebody something they don't already know, you have switched off their brains, filled them with fear, and their hearts are pumping. Now, you guys like technology. You understand what that means? It means you can't go around telling people how cool things are or how new and novel or amazing they are because simply saying those words is like creating your own resistance. Do you understand? When you're talking to people, you use what's called future familiar. Oh, smart sheet. It's just like the spreadsheets you've used for 40 years. And you know that database, which you've also had for 20 years. And you know how sometimes you're in a meeting and somebody draws on the flip chart. And if you're lucky, you have a workshop and you all talk about it together. It's just like that, with the only small difference that it's all in one place, seamless, and has a great interface. Does that scare you? As opposed to, this is really cool, it's amazing, it's going to transform our business. Okay, stopping at that point, because I hope I've made the point that if you don't understand how your other fellow human beings work, you're not going to get very far. But now I want to look at you. But before we go there, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. Just talk with the people on this side of you and go, hey, he's crazy. No, he's not. I learned this. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> 30 seconds. We'll start again. My little ladybird. It's timing you. I want to also write down things. I'm a professor. I know I'm making jokes, but I've just shown you how to engage people. I've just shown you about hopes and fears, which is something which allows you to, to get people to tell you what's, wor what's worrying them, which means that I know the things I shouldn't do because you've told me about your fears so I can fix them so that there isn't an elephant in the room. So I've, I've shown you all these things, but you're not taking notes because everyone knows if you go to a meeting, you take notes. Everyone thinks you're doing the work. But <laughs> Come on, 30 seconds. Go. Talk to, your, talk to everyone else.
Great stuff. Okay. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts, any ahas? Any questions, any comments, any thoughts, any ahas? Please, yes. So how do you justify the investment in a product with future familiar language? Sure, exactly. Um, so uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, can I do this? So I'll, I'll give you another trick which you use. You don't justify it yourself. You get other people to justify it for you. Okay? So I'll, if I get a chance to show you, I will. If not, it doesn't matter. But I'll explain it. So there is a... We're so trained up to have goals. Have you got goals? Objectives, those things, okay? But to have a reasonable goal, you need to know what the future looks like, and everyone else needs to understand and articulate it. Am I right? When you're doing something brand new, hand on heart, you don't have a clue, do you? You see, one of the headaches is, as the world is sped up, so if I make this now, and I make this the past, okay, and I look at how much change there is, the number of people on the planet, the amount of technology, it all does this hockey stick, doesn't it? Everyone knows that. And we know that once upon a time we used to do budgets. Why? Annual budgets, because the world might be changing that fast, but we could learn faster than the world was changing, because we knew what was coming. So that was quite flat. These days, the chances you know the end point when you start are close to zero. Am I right? Honestly, we're all friends together? Okay. So, so that's the first headache you've got. They don't know it, you don't know it, you're trying to justify it. So how would you do it? You don't use goals. You use what I call a gap. You go, right guys, there is a gap. A gap is the difference between where you are and where you dream you would be. You know? So the gap might be something along the lines of, we do not have enough energy for all the work we have to do. Or our resource gets tired before they've done everything. Or our costs are too high. It doesn't matter. Scribble that down, stick it in the middle of a sheet, an image, whatever it is. Then there are three questions you ask people around you. Question number one. So I've been asking myself, but you can help me. If we don't fix it, what do you think will happen? And they'll burble on. Well, it'll continue to be bad. It'll be horrible, blah, 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 et cetera. Which is a conversation. It doesn't look like a business case, does it? And then you say, but if we could fix it, what could we get? Well, we wouldn't have to do 12, 12 times as much rework, and people will be more engaged, and blah, blah, blah. A turnover of staff will go down. Great, okay. So you just take those two, and while you're talking to them, you start putting numbers on it. So you said our turnover, uh, we lose uh, six people a week, that's like 10K, and uh, we also have people doing rework, that's another 200 million, whatever it is. But if we fixed it, we might get 60 million more and 12 million more. Take that number away from that number, that's your value at stake. Just in a conversation, in a conversation, nothing new being suggested. They're coming up with all the issues. You haven't surprised them. You got it? And when they see how big the gap is, how much money, how much time, how much emotion you can save, then you go, that's really weird. Why have we not fixed it yet? Why haven't we done it yet? And you shut up and let them talk. Well, we haven't got a solution which will work with that. Oh, well, maybe you can find one. Okay, well, you know, senior management haven't signed it off. Okay, so we need to figure out how we get through that talking to the PowerPoints to the top. Okay, it's called a gap leap. So... When we finish with this, if you want any of the tools, uh, if you do qube.cc forward slash P-E-T-S, which stands for People Engagement Tools, P-E-T-S, forward slash, I've taught you something called hopes and fears. If you type in hopes and fears, you'll get a quick guide. If you type in future familiar, you'll get a quick guide. If you type in gap leap, you'll get a quick guide. Okay? So very simple techniques. Was that okay? Great. Now we need to move to you. I need to do three things in the, the remaining time we have. First, get you to understand how you need to change. Second, figure out how we're going to influence other people, but I'll do a little of that, and then a lot about actually project execution, because I'm supposed to be a world expert at that, okay? So, about you. I need a good-looking volunteer. Um, I think it's you. Come, come, come. You, no, don't look at Yes, you, no, come. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Hello, thank Hello. you. So, I'm going to teach you how to count to three. Okay? I'm going to teach you how to count to three. Uh, everyone's laughing. Okay? 
but we're going to do it collaboratively, okay? So what I need is everyone in pairs. So make sure you're in a pair. Maybe you have to go behind you to be in a pair. Make sure, so you, you and me, make sure you're in a pair. Otherwise, the next three minutes will be meaningless to you. Make sure you're in a pair. Talk to somebody, point to somebody. You and me, point to each other. Make sure everyone in a pair, including all the introverts. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is everyone in a pair? Yes. Okay. If you said no, we didn't hear. It was too loud. Okay. So we're going to count to three collaboratively. What size? I say one. He says two. I say three. He says one, two, three. And we go really fast. So stand up and have a go. Stand up quickly and have a go. One. Okay. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. One. Two. No good. They can't do it. Rubbish, rubbish. Look, it's really simple. One, two, three. Look, I'll make it easier for you. Let me make it easier for you. Easy, easy, okay? So, so forget the number one. Remember, forget the number one. Replace the number one with a click of the finger. So click two, three, click. Go as fast as you can. Go, 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 go. No, click two, three. So I click, you say two. Two. Three. Two. Three. <laughs> two. Uh, Stop, rubbish. Look, click, two, three. Easy. Look, can you remember the number three? Can everyone here remember the number three? Okay. So click, then the other person. Clap, then three. Click, clap, three. As fast as you can. Go, go, go. Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I'm already rubbish. <laughs> Stop, no, click, clap. It has to go backwards and forwards. Stop, rubbish. This team is particularly rubbish. Forget numbers. I knew numbers were too advanced for you. Forget all the numbers, okay? Forget numbers, okay? Too advanced for you. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> so we're going click, then the other person goes clap, then you go jump and slap your thigh, okay? <laughs> Back and forth, as fast as you can, go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, final round, final round, I promise, final round, final round, really, can you go back to doing one, two, three, and see how you've improved, just go back to one, two, three, 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 one, two. Perfect. Applaud yourselves. Well done. You learned to count to three. And you can sit down. And applause extra for my good looking assistant. <laughs> that was so disappointing. <laughs> okay. Serious bit. Um, I said, let's count to three. And in your head, you went, oh, I can do that. I heard some titters. People laughed at me when I said, I'm going to teach you to count to three. I added in the word collaboratively. It went over your heads, okay? <laughs> and yeah, I couldn't do that. So I said, okay, you're going to pair up. I'd love to pair up, okay? So anyway, you paired up with somebody. And then I said, okay, you're going to do one, two, three. And so I bet most of you did this. Well, do you want to go first? No, no, you go first. <laughs> 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 okay, so you go, okay, I'll go first. And you did a magnificent one. And you are doing a dance of victory. The other person's pissed off because they want to go first. So they're not listening to you. So they splutter too. Okay? But of course you're not listening. So finally you say three, but then they can't remember because they were... Do you understand? Because before you did it, you were in your own head. You thought change is somehow about you. You thought collaboration was about you. And then slowly I got you to relax and laugh, and forget about the big I am. <laughs> and then you went back to one, two, three, and you were almost thinking the other person's numbers for them. Am I right? When you're leading change, that's your mindset. It's about the people you're trying to lead in change. It's not about you. All the time you're thinking about yourself, you're not helping. When I ask your hopes and fears, I was putting myself at risk because if I ask your hopes and fears and I don't fulfill them, I'm in trouble. But I was going to you. You understand? And that makes you nervous. But that's exactly where you want to be. So when you're driving through change, it's not about implementing smart sheet. It's about enabling your colleagues 
your customers, whoever it is, to be able to fill their gap, whatever it is, and now you know because you're listening to them instead of trying to count your numbers at the same time, to deliver what they want. That's the mindset. Does that make sense? It's so difficult to do because with normal life, we're under so much pressure on our own. So if there was one thing I was going to say to you, that is the secret with starting to deliver change. If you want people to relax, as you listen to them, play back what, you think, what, you, what they've said. Play it back to them. So let me be sure I've understood. What you're saying is, your gap is, this is what you're going to do. Then they relax because now they know they've been heard. And it also forces you to pay attention. So that's that chapter. Anything else you want to know about yourselves? I think you're great. I have to say that. There are more of you than there are of me. <laughs> okay. We've got our customer 30 seconds. What am I going to do differently? Is he crazy? Yes, it's true. I've been trying to sell this, and I went too fast in my organization. So instead of concentrating on the people, I went and chased about the technology, and the technology is great, but now everyone's resisting it. I don't know why, etc. So maybe you want to talk to each other 30 seconds. It's not long. Go. About 10 seconds left. Okay. Hello. Anyone there? Okay, let's go. Any questions about yourselves and being leaders? Any questions? Okay, so whilst you were doing that, I was working quite hard. So hopes and, <laughs> hopes and fears, that's the tool I would use, because I, I live in a virtual classroom. So this is the, set, the tool I put together before I met you for this session. You know, the hopes I thought would be things like this, okay? Um, but I'm probably wrong, you didn't want any fun. Um, and my greatest fears have come true, no interaction, no notes taken, and so on, okay? So that's hopes and fears. Future Familiar, if you go and find it on the, on the um, site, oh, let me, I can do the gap leap because it's here, okay? So the gap leap is this, the gap, the difference between where you are and where you'd like to be, then think about what happens if you don't fix it, think about what happens if you fix it, and why not fix yet? That's the conversation we would have. Uh, I know Future Familia is in here, but I can't remember where it is. Let me find it soon. Uh, da, da, da. If I don't find it in two, sec two clicks, I'm just going to give up. Is that him? Yeah, that could be him. Okay, so here's Future Familia. Very simple. Okay, write down how you would say it. It's almost the same as, give an example. But with a very small change, that. Give an example. And because of that small change, it's going to be fabulous. Got it? Okay. Prepare, move forward. Okay, so... The people around you will always resist change because as I showed you with the saber-toothed tiger story, they've got software in their necks. There's nothing you can do about that. But when you do ask people questions like I ask you hopes and fears, you trigger a completely different piece of software. That's why you ask about the gap leap questions because there's a second piece of software, which, have you noticed how brilliant all your own ideas are? They're wonderful, aren't they? Your ideas are brilliant, why is that? Because they're yours, because the mechanism is really simple. This is how it works. Um, what happens is you have an idea. There is then a piece of software in the back of your neck. This is your head. This is this not Homer Simpson. This is you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> there, okay. Slightly above the amygdala. That software is to stop you dying of hunger because the brain burns energy 10 times faster than the muscle. Dreadful thing, okay? So if you just had random nice ideas, you would starve to death. So the moment you have an idea, okay, 
This thing acts like a policeman says, hey, I can see you're thinking and burning energy. Take that idea and fall in love with it. Why? So you work really hard to turn it into more food. And this goes back millions of years. It's in your head. You can't get rid of it. So when you have an idea, you always fall in love with your own idea. So part of what you have to do is ensure the people you're engaging with have a chance to co-create what you're doing. And that, for me, always means there are two curves people could use. They can focus on the process and just do the process bit and then move on to the task, process, people. Or they can focus on the people and then move on to the task. I really made a big step through with this um, from an experience with um, a mining company who had sunk the deepest mine ever. Amazing, okay? It was a gold mine. They found gold. Amazing. They were in trouble. Why? Because they had a couple of accidents on site. So, what basically that tells you is, you can focus on the task. So, let's imagine the task, 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 on this axis here, okay? Task is being done, tick, 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 here's the gold, I should probably make it yellow, shining, okay? On the other hand, you can focus on the people, lots of smiley people, lots of, uh, you know, takeouts, uh, if they're working from home, you send them pizza, everyone's happy, shake, holding hands. Meanwhile, the work is on a little pile on the corner over there, okay? This one tends to end up with your long list of people left behind on their backs. This is of no use because if you don't focus on the task or the people, what's the point? This is where you're trying to get to. But you can't take the people you've upset and uh, magically make them wake up and love you. You have to engage the people to deliver the task. So when you're engaging with people, the real question you ask yourself is, does this person understand what I'm doing and do they agree? If the answer is yes, don't say another word to them. If the answer is no, then you need to engage them because chances are you're just about to surprise them and then they'll block you. Great, so I'm going to stop there with those, tr those, those particular things. That's another tool which I'll also scribble for you in a second. So the last thing I want to tell you about is change because that is the biggest nightmare. Um, I described how the world had accelerated. Oh, wrong page. I described how the world had accelerated. So the world was here, learning was here. The thing which that does to us is it messes up how change works. It used to be that all changes, we knew exactly what we were going to do, and we knew how we were going to do them. But these days, you'll find that who's got a change here where they know how they're going to do it, but they don't know what they're going to do, uh, the outcome's going to be? One's going up? Yeah, okay. Who's got a change here where they know what they want to achieve, but they're not sure how they'll get there? Who's got a change here where they don't know what or they don't know how, but they know they should use smart key somewhere? <laughs> Okay, it's a different game. This I call paint by numbers, like those little books we used to have as kids. These are completely different types of change. They're far more emotional. They're far more difficult to track through. Listening and learning become really important. So you might think you're just running a traditional project one step to the other, but if it's very unclear, you do as if you're lost in the fog. You take one step at a time, holding hands and talking to people. Don't go too fast. If you have a goal, you do it as if you're on a quest. I know the goal, yay! But you don't just track one track, you try many things because you know the goal, so well, let's try everything. If you know the how, then all your effort goes into, like a film, getting the script, because you already got the cameras. So finding out what people want. So those three types of projects, I think are quite easy to deal with as long as you pay attention and know it's not going to go directly to track. So guys, I'm going to be stopping at roughly around that point. Is there anything I missed from the hopes and fears? Can you remember? Is there anything I've not covered? Have you made your notes? Where is my oh, there you go. I can't read my own handwriting. What did I write in the hopes and fears? Yeah, I've done it all. I've done it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, inspiration. The trick with inspiration is a very simple formula. You do something that is impossible, okay, or very hard. You make it look easy to everyone. Don't grumble, don't moan. And look as if you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> when you do that, people will always be inspired and they'll always try and copy you. It's most bizarre. <laughs> try it and see. Impossible. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you with my final joke. Um, it's a joke I wrote years ago when I was at Astrid. Oh, I've got, can I do two plugs? One, I have a new book. Buy it. It's called All Change, okay? The second, the second, the second is, is, uh, is, is uh, this space which we were looking at, the uh, future familiar. This is Cube. This is where I teach people. So this is one of my classrooms. 
So people would sit around and they can talk. It would be great if on Smartsheet you use Smartsheet in spaces like this because you could have your colleagues there chatting to them whilst happily working away, but moved on from that. Let me leave you with that final joke. Okay, when I was at Astrid as a young tutor, I was sent off to go and do some research to come up with a joke for one of the senior tutors. And I came up with a joke, and I hope you never heard it. Um, it's about change and monkeys. Apparently, um, one of the things they did was they got, and it didn't experiment where they got five monkeys, put them in a cage, Okay, hung a banana from the ceiling, put a step ladder up. Monkeys like bananas, guess what happened? They started climbing, going for the banana. Of course they did, okay? So what then happens? The researchers took a hose of cold water, hosed the lead monkey, and hosed all the others, even the ones who hadn't moved, okay? So they're all sitting there shivering. So what do they do? Finally they warm up, and they start going for the banana again, okay? Same thing, hose the lead one, hose all the others, even the ones who haven't moved at all, okay? So shivering. At that point, you take one of the monkeys out, replace them with a brand new monkey. Brand new monkey comes walking in, sees the banana, sees these monkeys who aren't going for the banana, goes, opportunity, I'm going for this. So he starts to climb, okay? At which point they all jump on him and beat him up. Because <laughs> they're smart, they don't want to get wet. They've worked out. So he's sitting there beaten up and really disgruntled, okay? Bring in another new monkey, take out one of the original monkeys. New monkey comes in, sees all the others sitting there, starts to climb. They all jump on him and beat him up, including the other new monkey, who joins in enthusiastically, even though he has no clue why. <laughs> you can take all the original monkeys out, and you'll end up with five monkeys who have never been wet, staring at the banana, drooling. And if you say to them, look, you could implement Smartsheet and make your life fantastic. Why don't you do it? They'll say, oh, you don't understand, Eddie. We've always done things here this way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm going to leave you with that last joke, so thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Learn and work hard for day two. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's wonderful. Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate so much the passion, energy, and insight you've shared with us today. I hope you found Eddie's talk compelling. I was taking notes myself. I love the idea of future familiar, of, of, of co-authoring, co-creating co, co the future. Um, and all of that is a good reminder that each one of us has what it takes to drive change. It's not always easy to navigate today's world. And I want to thank each of you to, for being a change maker in your organization. As you attend the breakout sessions now, as you explore the Experience Hub and connect with each other, I encourage you to discover new ways to drive meaningful change. Thank you all for being here today. Enjoy the rest of the conference.